This is this is this is. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Mike Herrera Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, appreciate you guys. What have you been up to? It's the week of Christmas 2021. Uh, what a crazy year it's been. The year's almost over. I'm sure everybody's realizing that and panicking in some sort of way. I don't know why we always panic. We know it's coming, yet, you know, we don't do much about it. I, me, personally. Maybe maybe you out there, maybe you're, you're all about planning ahead, but me... Not so much. <laughs> but uh, this week, I will get it done uh, a couple days in advance. Of course, MXPX has been crazy busy, not only with MXPX.com, our merch store, sending stuff out day after day. Um, it's slowed down as as it's gotten really close to Christmas. I think people kind of just like are like, oh, it's too late. Um, it's not actually too late. Uh, we can, in some cases, get things out. But um, <laughs> thank you so much for everybody that ordered so much stuff over the, the holiday season. Uh, we had a lot of really cool items. We still have some. Some of the sizes are getting low, but um, appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, MXPX.com. What you can still get, though, is MXPX is playing a live stream live on the internet this Thursday. That's Christmas Eve Eve, December 23, December 23rd. That's Festivus. Festivus for the rest of us. I'm going to have to come up with something. Maybe I'll come up with something for the uh, the promo of this podcast. Anyway, we'll figure it out. But uh, we meaning me and the mouse in my pocket. That's right. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, thank you, thank you. Uh, we are playing live on the internet this Thursday doing a bunch of Christmas songs. We're definitely going to play the new Christmas song. So earmuffs to the children. But uh, everybody else can enjoy it. Uh, you know what? It just depends on who you are, right? Um, we, uh, we're going to have some fun with it. Christmas songs, a bunch of your favorites, a bunch of our favorites, and uh, we have been, we've been paying attention to some requests, so if you've been out there requesting something, then uh, chances are it could be on the list. Anyway, uh, thank you, you can get tickets at mxph.com right now, up until, up until 6.30 p.m., actually, not even true, once we're done live, if you can't make it live, we leave it up for a whole week and you can watch it as many times as you want. So if you watch it live, you really enjoyed it, maybe you went to the bathroom for a song or something, whatever it is, you can watch it as many times as you want. And I always review the shows after we're done and I'll go to the link and, and it's a pretty cool experience. Just And especially knowing that it's actually done live. So whatever happens, happens. There's no fixing, there's no auto-tune, it's just, it's us. So uh, we have a lot of fun with it, and one of the funnest parts, honestly, is the comment section. It's a live comment section when we're playing, and it's hard to read because things are so fast. But we'll grab we'll grab some comments and we'll start talking about it. And, and I love I love it. You know, I love that interaction. You know. Anyway, enough about that. Thank you so much. This is gonna be it's gonna be a good episode. I've been recovering. I had a cold. Uh, got a cold maybe about two weeks ago. <clears throat> Uh, it wasn't a bad cold, honestly. It really only lasted a couple days where I was like really stuffed up my nose. But um, I'm still just, I'm still just slightly stuffed up, just a little bit. And my voice is coming back, but um, it's been good. It's been good. So I'm recovering, working on uh, a ton of MXPX stuff. I'm still writing uh, a little bit, and um, <clears throat> you know the. This news live stream, you know, I got to start practicing my butt off for this thing. So that's what I'm going to do all this week, and um, and then we're gonna we're gonna do it Thursday night. I hope to see you guys there. Um, let's get to your voicemails, all right? Voicemails, woo! Here we go. Uh, I have not read these, by the way, so maybe they're maybe they're really boring. I don't know. I apologize, but it's not actually me. It's you. So. If these are boring voicemails, and I'm sure they're not, but uh, sing, write in, sing, yes, yeah, sing, sing on the sing on the voicemail. Call me three six zero eight three zero six 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 zero. Sing on it. Do whatever it is. Ask me a better question. But like I said, I haven't heard these, so maybe they're great questions. Let's get to it. And thank you ahead of time. Thanks for calling in, everybody that did. And if we don't get to yours. Well, I apologize. Here we go. 
Hey, Mike, this is Lou from New Jersey. Just wanted to uh, call, wish you a happy Thanksgiving, and depending on when you listen to this, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, Merry Christmas. Yeah, man. Just wanted to thank you for uh, for all your music, for your band, and uh, me and my family got the live stream coming for Christmas, so uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Excellent. And uh, that's it, man. Happy Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Can't wait to see you guys. Hopefully you come to, uh, to New Jersey or New York next year. See you soon. Thanks, Lou. That's so that's so nice. Uh, looking forward to it. Was just talking about the live stream. All right. Um, next. Hey, Mike. This is Tanner Berry from Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, been a big fan of yours and MXPA for a really long time. Uh, I just had a question for you. Uh, what is the best way for your fans to support you financially in the sense of like, should we be buying MP3 downloads from like Amazon or Apple, or do you make more money if we're streaming your music or do you get what I'm saying? Like kind of give us a breakdown of like how you as an artist and you as a band uh, generate the most revenue so that you guys can keep doing what you're doing uh, so that the fans know the best way that we can support you so that you can keep making the great music that you guys make. Um, yeah, that was it. That's my question. Thanks. Bye. Tanner, thank you so much, man. Uh, cool question. And that's a hard question to answer because it's not, it's not really one thing. It's a lot of things. Um, I think probably the best way to support MXPX is to buy a ticket to our live stream because we're doing the work anyway. Um, so no, so, so the more tickets we sell, actually, the more money we will make. Um, so the live stream, uh, mxpx.com, you watch it straight from mxpx.com and that's, I mean, we do pay a cut for that, you know, to the, to the service that we use. Single music is the service we use, but, but yeah, uh, that's probably literally if I could, I probably am wrong if, if, if Tom Chinchilla was here, he'd be able to answer, but I think I'm right about the live stream and the, the mxpx web, you know, just our merch stuff. Um. Not everything is a huge profit on the merch side of things, but but uh, you know it's, it just the overall orders that come in. It, it really helps uh, us pay all our people, pay our team, pay my mom. She's in charge of the merch store. Um, now getting into the streaming side of things, where this is where it gets con complicated and things are true and things are sort of untrue sometimes, you know, but. You know, uh, a lot, you hear a lot of artists complain about, oh, Spotify doesn't pay enough. And honestly, uh, you know, a business is always going to try to find <laughs> a way to not pay. But I don't think it's Spotify. I think it's honestly the record labels. The record labels negotiated a deal with Spotify back in the early days. And I'm not an expert on this, by the way, uh, but I have read a lot of articles. <laughs> And, uh, you know, they negotiated a, a rate that was favorable to, to the labels, you know, the major labels, which is, there's really only, I mean, I guess four major labels, really, that own everything um, and subsidiaries. And then there's a bunch of indies, but a lot of the indies are owned by the majors. So Sony, Universal, you know, it's like, it's actually getting smaller uh, as it goes. Um, but, you, you know, when we... When we go on Spotify, we go on Apple Music, it's, there are differences. You know, Apple Music is, uh, has a different algorithm than say Spotify does, but when it comes to what's best to support the breakdown, I think honestly, it's not important enough, you know, we had a, let me say, it's not important enough to disrupt your, your, um, just like your regular listening. Like I wouldn't want people to stop listening on Spotify and start listening on another service just because it get, it got us like a couple cents more, something like that. But um, but if you're on Spotify, you know things like that. We've asked people, hey, can you play this song? Because this song is what we're trying to push, and the algorithm is trying to push a cover song. And so like if you don't do the cover, which is for people that want to know, uh, Kids in America is just by the algorithm in the past was always pushed. So if you listen to an MXPX song on Spotify and then you 
the next song is an MXPX song, it's gonna play Kids in America. And so we ask people to skip that and go to Let's Ride. Uh, or just go to Let's Ride and then it, when it comes up, skip it. Uh, and you know, dislike it. Not that we don't like the song or the cover, but it's because you reinforce what Spotify thinks you want. And nobody wants to hear Kids in America. Maybe 1% of our fan base wants to hear Kids in America. But, um, so that's not what it's about, really. It was, it was, it's more about, <laughs> more about the fact that because on the cover, too, was the f really the first thing uploaded to Spotify by, the, by Universal back in the day. And all of our other stuff kind of lagged and got put on as, uh, this is like one of a million albums that this company has to put on these digital services. So I can see why things didn't get put on in the right order, but we didn't pay any attention to Spotify until literally a couple years ago and the damage was done. So because that song was like our first, it, it thought that that's our big hit, you know, and, and that's what the algorithm thought. So like weird things like that. Um, but we, we are, we're so appreciative that the fans, uh, you know, helped by doing that. So that was a huge thing. So if you're on Spotify, just play Let's Ride, play your favorite songs, um, you know, you can play any of the albums, to be honest. It doesn't, you know, even if we don't own an album, that's not like, oh, don't play the old stuff. Like, that's not what this is about, you know. Um, all of our newer stuff from um, Plans Within Plans till, till, till now, you know, and going forward, we own all of the rights to, we own the publishing, we own the, the, um, the, the record label side as well. So those newer songs, of course, we want people to listen to. But, uh, like, you know, you should never not listen to your favorite song just because it doesn't make us a couple pennies after, you know, you know, I wonder what each person, like, it's just, there's just so much volume. It's hard to say, like, what each person would actually contribute to an artist's uh, purse. But I, I love the question, and it's really interesting to me, you know, just the whole streaming service thing. Um, I think Amazon's, Amazon's good. Uh, they're all very close, you know, um, so whatever you're already listening to, um, listen to it. You know, if you prefer to listen to CD, cool, you know, uh, you know, even if it's, you know, it's not making us any money once you listen to it on CD over and over, but that's okay because it's like, what, you, what's your experience, you know, because we want, we want MXPX to be an experience for the listener, not just the listener being doing something for us. So, you know, I think it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship. You know, there's a back and forth to it. We put out the music, we put out all this stuff around, you know, the ecosystem of the band and the music. And um, the community is there because of that. So people know each other because of the music and because of hanging out with other people that love the music. So it's a really beautiful thing. And it's a living, breathing thing as well. You know, these are real people we're talking about. So, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's flattering. You know, I don't, I don't take it lightly. You know, I, I appreciate anybody that wants to help us out. So, uh, I always say, you know, with this podcast, mxpx.com, just go in there, seeing what we have going on. Cause of course we have whatever's latest. We have some shows coming up, uh, 2022. April Fool's Day, April 1st, will be in Anaheim, California at the House of Blues. And then April 2nd, will be in Phoenix, Arizona at the uh, the Marquee Theater. So uh, MXPX, Zebrahead, uh, uh, Bad Cop, Bad Cop, and Mercy Music. It's going to be a blast. They're going. They're, all those bands are going to be at both shows. MXPX.com for that. So I mean... You know, just whatever we're doing there is, is a good spot, you know, and listening wherever you're listening. I think, you know, letting people know, you know, if, if you can't make something, but you know somebody that is a fan of punk rock, not not just a fan of MXPX, I think a fan of punk rock, just broadening the net, broadening the, the audience and the, the family, um, that's helpful, you know. Um, I honestly haven't thought too much about this stuff in a little while, but... Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. In, in I'm sure I'm missing something. Um, of course, live shows used to be a really, uh, really the only way we made most of our money. And because of the pandemic, we we were already mo you know moving a lot of our systems, if you call them systems, you know, 
Uh, we're a very small business uh, that, that does a lot of things on our own. But, um, you know, we're, we're trying to fix our web store half the time. I mean, I know there's been issues with our merch store, people not being able to check out. Um, and the workaround with that, by the way, is to go to PayPal and then like pay with PayPal, but then you can change your payment after that. But it's something we've been working on with Spotify and asking like, or it's not Spotify, Shopify. And, um, they're like, there's nothing wrong. It's all working fine. And then we, we go back, we hear somebody's had some issue with it. People like good Bob, Bob Knight, who produces this, this podcast, shout out to Bob. He he's had issues with it. So, um, those are things that are very frustrating to us and we're try always trying to fix in the background and, and you don't always know about that, but there's, there's, there's always a few of those types of things going on at any given moment, uh, in the MXPX world. But, uh, we appreciate everything you do. MXPX.com, sign up for our mailing list, our emailing list. That's what I should have said. That, you know, there's so many things, but signing up for our email list is great. You can get there at MXPX.com sign up on our text list, which uh, is also on mxpx.com, um, is cool too, because then when we release a new song, a new album, have a show coming out, you'll get a text. Uh, but it's not a ton, it's just a couple texts, maybe a month, every month, or something like that, but I like it. Mm. This really became, you know, promoting mxpx, promoting us, you know, but the question was, how best can fans support? and a breakdown of it. So I tried to get very detailed on, uh, on all that. But real quick, back to the live stuff, live shows. Um, that used to be a big money maker. And nowadays with COVID, um, you know, we get, we get offers for the same amount of money, but the expenses are 30, 40, sometimes 50% more. So we're actually getting half the money that we would have gotten because we had to pay so much more. And the fees are going up. You guys know this. You know they're charging probably some sort of some sort of COVID fee or something. I don't know what's happening because we haven't done our shows yet. But um, as it gets closer, I'm sure I'll, I'll find out more of those details. And, and to be honest, Tom Chichilla, my business partner, uh, definitely knows probably those details. I just haven't haven't had time to really talk to him about it. But, um, you know, but nowadays it's just, it's going to be different. You know, shows are so much fun, so much fun. And they're still going to be a lot of fun. But I think, you know, just the, uh, the, the, just the mere fact of getting ourselves from Seattle to wherever we're going, you know, and then making sure all our crew is good and, um, it's going to be hard and you know, it's going to cost a lot more so that, that we're not seeing live shows as much as a way to make money anymore and uh, more as something that we just love to do and because we've always loved to do it. So like we're almost back to, you know, back in the beginning when we didn't make money. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting time and I am not, I'm not, uh, not really bummed about it. Honestly, I, I feel like no matter what, we will find a way like we always do to succeed and to uh, be positive and to bring, bring that positivity to the audience, you know, and MXPX is all about, you know, looking at things in a hard way for a second, but then finding the good in it, you know, and tomorrow's another day is a good example of that. That's like, I always felt like that was like a really good theme for MXPX, tomorrow's another day. Uh, or Secret Weapon. Secret Weapon is a great positive theme. Um, play It Loud, but not quite as much. Play It Loud's more of like an anthem of like, let's just, this is, we're celebrating the music uh, rather than ourselves. But well, it, it's a celebration of ourselves as well. I guess Play It Loud. But um, yeah, but, but Tomorrow's Another Day, Secret Weapon, that's MXPX, and I always want to bring that. So that's a good reason to do shows. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, I don't want to lose the connection with the audience, um, and I don't feel like we have at all. You know, we've we've gone, we've you know these live streams, live playing live on the internet between this world and the next. We did ten so far, and we got eleven coming up. But that really saved us. I think if, I think it saved us mentally. You know, where a lot of people were like about to crack. We're about to crack, but nowhere near most people. You know. Um, I'm sure everybody's like feeling, you know, feels that from maybe a friend or maybe you feel that yourself. 
but just like things are too much these days, you know, at times. And the live streams really, it gave the band a focus to, to go through all these songs. And we were going through songs we sometimes had never played live or hadn't played live in 10, 15, 20 years. And <clears throat> we focused on it, we played it, we had a good time. And then we got to interact with the audience at the same time on the message board, on the comment section. <clears throat> And excuse me, and it really, it, it really kind of I think gave us a purpose that I think a lot of musicians didn't have. Musicians that were used to just touring constantly, they didn't have that, and they didn't get that from one doing one live stream. I mean, sure, you you can do a live stream, but it doesn't. We got into such a rhythm where it was part of our life, and it was, and it was, in our mind, it was we go. Okay, we give ourselves like one or two days after the sh after the show, and then really just one day off. And then I was sending out uh, the next set list or set of songs. Um, and in some cases, we were working on a few of them ahead of time. And it, it was a really interesting time. It was probably like the most, I guess it's like touring, but in a different way. It was more like putting on a TV show every every month because um, we were doing it about once a month, maybe sometimes a little less like a few of them were a little less a few a little more than a month but um it was kind of like doing a tv production um you know and i and come i commend some of these like live tv shows that do it live like saturday night live and all them but it's not easy to put all the technical stuff and get that going and then and then we're, we're doing new songs every every set um it was a lot but we figured it out and, and that was, uh, like I said, I think it saved us and it, and it made us not go as crazy. So um, I appreciate everybody that, that was part of uh, those live stream shows. And uh, if you wanna be part of it or if you can't even make it, but you can just watch it later, um, mhpeaks.com for the tickets. Um, we have one coming up and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Let's, uh, let's get on with the next one, the next voicemail. Hey Mike, my name's Zach. I'm a huge fan. Been a fan for a long time of MXPX. Yeah, I I need some clarification on something. So when I was a kid, like 12 years old, probably 2006, 2007, I walked into a music store in Boiling Springs, South Carolina, where I'm from, and I passed by someone as I was walking in, and the dude behind the counter said to me. Hey, you know who that was who just walked out? That was Mike Herrera from MXPX. And I believed him. And for years, I've told everyone that story, that I saw you at this music store. But recently, I started thinking about it, and he was probably lying to me, right? So anyway, Mike, the question is, have you ever been to Boulevard Music in Boiling Springs, South Carolina, in the early 2000s? See ya. All right, thanks for calling, Zach. That's a good question. That is a good, uh, I wonder, I wonder. You know, honestly, it probably could have been me. You're right to be a little skeptical of this guy. This guy might be trying to pull something on you. Um, there's been a lot of times when, when there's been stories made up. You know, my best friend Mike's coming in. Don't worry, this, that. But honestly, I don't remember, I wouldn't remember if I'd been there. It's an independent music store called Boulevard Music in Boiling Springs, South Carolina. Early 2000s, absolutely could have been. Maybe I had to get some strings. Maybe I had to get some something. I don't know. There's been plenty of times on tour when I've had to go in and, and go to a music store. Now, early 2000s, I don't know. Sounds like I would have been on a bus would have been would have been probably sending a guitar tech or my bass tech the leprechauno james leprechauno barrett um or if it was before james it would have been would have been neil hunt anyway it's possible i don't want to dash your your hopes i don't want to tell you santa ain't real and the elves are uh <laughs> figment of your imagination but uh because who knows it, it, 
I could have been there. I probably was there. Let's just go ahead and say, yeah, that was me. All right, what's next? What's up, Mike? This is Joey in Houston, Texas. So I just wanted to thank you for inspiring me to play bass and, you know, write my own music. Anyway, I was just curious if you would ever, you know, do like a on the cover type album with MXPX where you guys played more of like your, I guess, like more hardcore influences, like Black Flag, things like that. Um, just curious. Also, do you agree that you can really write just music and, you know, remember your place and time and you kind of think back fondly or not so fondly or anything like that. Also, what's up? Do you ever look at the Fools Gone Wild page on Instagram? If not, look at it closely. Okay. Thanks for calling in, Joey. I, I missed a little bit of that last bit, but uh, <laughs> uh, I like your idea, though, on the cover punk covers um we kind of did you know we've kind of we've done so many punk covers already oh so the next one kept playing my bad uh my we've done a bunch of punk covers um suburban home descendant song that's on on the cover too um we've done janie jones the clash we've done um Elvis Costello, not really a punk band, I guess. Kind of punk, but not not in the way you mean. Um, we've done, we did No Effects. We did, uh, we did, uh, we did a Dwarves cover. Uh, I'm not going to Salt Lake City. We did, you should just, I mean, honestly, you should probably just do a little research and check them out because we have almost an album's worth of, of covers already. And should we do more? Probably. We should probably will. We probably will. So, <laughs> Atari's cover. We've we've done so many. Yes, I'm just they're, they're coming to me. People are at home are like this song, this song, this song. I'm like yes, yes, that 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 that. Back in the day, one of the earliest covers we did was uh, just what I needed by the Cars, and yeah, they're more like a new wave rock band, but very punk in my opinion and so many bands so many, like almost every band when they start out covers that song i shit you not uh, everything i've seen like i've seen old clips of like your favorite band i'm sure red hot chili peppers covered that song at one point um but anyway yes great idea no we're probably not going to release anything like that anytime soon but um but yeah, I, I like the idea. And we've done a ton of punk covers already, so go check them. All right. Uh, your question about, I think you were asking, do you look back, do I look back on my musical legacy fondly or badly or, you know, in with disdain? <laughs> What's the right word here? Uh, the qu The answer is, you know, for the most, I think it's more about life, but um, trying to put music in perspective of my life. And of course, the music is bigger than than my life even, which is, I think it's good to say that. It's good to admit that. <laughs> you know, the music really it does take on a life of its own. And, and, you know, yet I still get to make my own life choices, you know, and sometimes based on you know, the music is affected by those choices, you know, but, um, but certainly after a while, the music does become its own thing. I look back on it fondly, um, even the bad times, you know, you know, there, there's plenty of mistakes, a lot of mistakes I've made and still will, but, um, I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'm in a good place right now. You know, and, and, and you say that, you know, it's like so much can happen in a week. But, but, <laughs> but yeah, I, I look back on it pretty well. You know, we can't get to where we are now without, you know, our failures. You know, in, in everybody that's been hugely successful in life has failed um, plenty, plenty before they got there. So I know you've heard that a million times. I won't repeat all that, but you, you know, it's true. And, uh, 
you know, I, I, I think, uh, I think we're not done is the, is, is, is really the main point here. Um, we're not done because I'm still writing new songs right now. And so our, our, our legacy or whatever you might want to call it, our musical legacy is still growing. It's still, um, fermenting in a way, you know, some of the, some of the songs, uh, it's funny, you know, like an album like Before Everything and After, um, you know, the hardcore fans and, you know, from our life in general days and our Poconetcha days and like the early days, you know, maybe didn't like that album. But like now, because we've lived so much life, we realize, oh, that wasn't such a crazy thing. It just was at the time um, to hear, you know, but, you know, and I get that. But now a lot of people embrace it. They're like, actually, it's pretty good, you know, now that they've heard some wacky modern music and they're like, okay, that before everything and after is not that crazy sounding. <laughs> it was slick at the time, you know, things like that, you know, and then you get, you, you cut through and you get into the songs that have, that have endured, like everything sucks when you're gone. Like, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, I try not to judge myself too harshly because what's the point, you know, I, I'm living and learning every day. Uh, I can write a better song today than yesterday or, you know, and, and then sometimes today I can't write as good of a song as yesterday. So it goes back and forth and, and life has an ebb and flow to it, just like my musical life does. So, yeah. All right. A couple more. Let's let's find out what what's what's next. Hey, Mike, this is Matt Sullivan from the band Title Holder. Um, I had a business question for you. So. Looking into 2022, the band is starting to put together a lot of content, starting to book a, a few shows that are kind of cool, kind of bigger than what I'm normally used to. Um, and I'm trying to really get on top of bookkeeping this year and making sure that I'm covering expenses and really treating this like a business. Um, when you started MXPX and, you know, you started making real money, you know, what were the steps that you took to make sure that you were doing it as professional as possible? Um, what kind of accountants were you talking to? Like, what relationships were you making in regards to that? Um, I'm looking around and, and trying to, you know, schedule some appointments with people to talk to, but I just want to make sure that I'm talking to the right people um, and, you know, making the most out of out of this go uh, with Title Holder. Um, thanks. Hey, Matt. What's up? Uh, shout out to Title Holder. Um, th those are good questions and questions I wish I knew to ask <laughs> when we started out. So the short answer is uh, my mom was helping us out early on and some would say she was the manager, but she didn't do anything a manager would do. She would do what a personal assistant would do, kind of like um, somebody that's like running the office, like an office manager. That's what she did. She did all the paperwork she did. Um, she did like, she would make calls, she would pay bills, she would, she would field press inquiries and things like that. Um, and she did a great job by the way, like having no training, having no one telling her what to do or anything, she did great. But you know, we didn't know, okay, let's, let's make sure we have our money working. Let's make sure we have our accounting right. Um, so it was quite a while after we actually started making money that we started cleaning things up. I, I really feel like it, it didn't happen until, I thought it was happening when we had a, a real kind of a serious manager for many years, through, all throughout our early years into our major label years, Creighton Burke. Uh, but he really wasn't doing those things. I mean, it just kind of seemed like he was, but um, he was just, to his, not, I, would, I don't want to give him, much credit because he was terrible at most most of the things he did but he really was busy once we were going just fielding the questions and feel trying to make decisions and do some math and this and that but it's a, it's a lot of work so you know we were not good business people ever 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 I didn't get a lawyer when I signed our first contract boom um, there's millions of dollars gone you know like things like that so um, you're asking the right questions. At the same time, I feel like I feel like somebody that's dotting all their their I's and crossing the T's 
maybe isn't writing the songs that are going to get that money. You know, like, so like things like that, you know, like it, it, there's a balance. But um, today it's just a different business altogether. It's a different world altogether. And if we were starting today, I would do what we're doing now, which is just getting everything, all your ducks in a row. Um, you know, when it comes to paperwork, who's in charge of what, that kind of thing, you know, accounting, we had a business accounting forever. Um, we're looking at, I think we're looking into somebody new again, but um, we have an accountant that does our taxes at the end of the year. So he does my personal taxes. It's all by the book, legit, but really, I mean, I, I there were so many years, early, early 2000s when I was like operating most, like on cash, you know, like I was just like cash, 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 blah, 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 um, making tons of money, but not doing the right things about it, you know, and things go up and down when it comes to money and, and what tons means, right? To me, like I see a bunch of dollar bills, I'm like, money, but, um, you know, it, it, let's get back to the, the question, Matt. Um, I think it's important to have somebody that's business savvy either in the band or working with the band on the band's team. So whether that's a manager slash booking agent or a booking, you know, usually your booking agent isn't going to be very, very savvy, but <laughs> business savvy. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just, it's a hard business for one, but, um, and, and managers, I mean, there's, there's, they're a dime a dozen. Most of them are terrible, to be honest. Most of them are terrible. Um, and even the ones that want to do good don't because it's just a really hard business. So, um, but <laughs> back to the question, find that one person that really has a handle on that kind of thing. Somebody that's not, you know, like I'm not that person. I, I guess I'm that person for the band, but I'm not that, like when it comes to, counting money and holding money and stuff like that, I give that to Tom Wisniewski, our guitar player. And, but at the same time, when it comes to like making band decisions, that usually, you know, lies to me. I'll ask the guys or whatever if it, if it's, if it makes sense to, <clears throat> but I'm not like super business guy. Um, I have been, and I've been trying, I mean, I've learned a lot over the years. But it comes in waves because, you know, everything's moving so fast in technology these days with obviously internet, web three, all these, you know, you're hearing about bands and NFTs and all this going on, Bitcoin. And, and then there's the real world, which is just, you go outside and there's none of that happening. I mean, not in my neighborhood, it's just life. So, um, whatever it is that you get into, you get into, you know, but, um, I know I've gotten way off, off topic, Mark, or sorry, Matt, uh, but it's a hard world. I guess my point in saying that uh, it goes up and down, you can learn something really well and then, or even be working with somebody that's doing really well, but then after a while that might change. You know, the world changes, what that person is good at is no longer working in the world in the world of marketing, in the world of business, in the music business, whatever it is. Uh, th that doesn't mean that person's bad. It just means they need to figure something out. They need to adjust it, like we all do, right? Um, so so there's, no, there's no real like, it's more like general advice because depending on what you're doing and who's doing it, it's gonna live or die by that, you know? Um, but it is an interesting time because you know, as I've been songwriting for a while now, like all summer and into the into the fall. Um, and well, we were doing shows as well, so I haven't really, you know, anyway, I won't get into that. But as I was just have been really just thinking about being creative, I haven't been keeping up with marketing or technology or like what the new, new, new is. And so, I'm gonna have to relearn, or am I gonna have to, I don't know. You know, it's like, I, I guess I could just not. But um, that's a choice, you know, that that's, it's kind of depressing in some way, just knowing that it's never gonna just sit. You're never gonna learn something and then just be able to do that, you know? And that's, I guess, what makes life so interesting, you know, is, is 
you just never know. You never know what's going to happen from day to day. And um, I like my routines, but same goes for me. You know, new th people show up, things happen. You know, I didn't know I was going to do this voicemail podcast, so I'm sorry for misspeaking and screwing this whole thing up. But uh, Matt, I hope I helped a little bit. Um, it's not a bad idea to get a business manager, somebody that basically will take care of bills and, and tell you when you're going to run out of money and all that. But those people cost money too. So, you know, uh, worth it when you have the money, for sure. Hard to say it's worth it when you don't. So learn to do everything a little bit yourself um, or somebody in the band um, the best you can. I mean, Facebook ads, like running your own Facebook ad, that is a great thing to know how to do. Um, going on and uploading your song to uh, TuneCore or something like that, that's something that's good to, to know how to do, right? So, um, all right, next question. Let's do, let's do just one more. Hey Mike, this is Matt Sullivan from the band Title Holder. Uh, I actually had a business question for Again? you in regards to um, what happens, um, or who should I talk to in regards to how to set up um, Hmm. Matt, you called twice. Did you did you get high and forget? Like what happened there? And then it just cuts off. So I assume you meant who do I talk to in regards to this thing in my pants? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you'd see a doctor. Um, thanks for calling in, Matt. I'm sure that you're like, what? What happened? I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I don't understand either, and that's part of life. It happens. Thank you guys so much for being part of the, the voicemail podcast. I, I need to check them again and download some more voicemails. So if you called recently, very, very recently, um, a few days ago, whatever it is, I'll get to it and you'll be on. Uh, but uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, everybody listening, I appreciate you. MXPeaks.com, thanks for going there. Thanks for checking that out. Thanks for uh, just all the love. All right, I feel very, very blessed. Merry Christmas to you. Hope you love the, the Santa hat. Um, and I uh, hope to see you on the live stream. All right, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.